They're showing blitz. Here they come. Flips it. Touchdown, Valdosta State. Shontavious with the catch. Give us a chance to get the touchdown. See if Coach Dean's going to go to the end zone with single coverage over there on Sean Davis, who we think he is. And he's looking for him. He's got him. Touchdown, that Oscar State makes it 27 to 17. The David Dean Show, your weekly look at Valdosta State University Blazer football, is brought to you by Georgia Farm Bureau. Hello and welcome to the David Dean Show. I'm Dick Rocky with the head coach, Valdosta State, 35-30 to 30 over the University of West Georgia up in Carrollton on what started out to be a miserable day and then things got really nice later in the football game. But coach, again, your football team comes out struggling in the first half. Yeah, it's frustrating. You know, I thought we were ready to play. We warmed up well. We were excited in the locker room and then we come out and for some reason we just went flat to start the ball game. and. Uh, you know, all three phases of our game, offense, defense, special teams, uh, we did not play very well in the first half, and that was the reason we were down. The thing is, your players talk about it. They, they don't know why. I saw in the paper, I think Sean Tavis said, we, we don't know why that happens. You, you really don't. You can't control emotions, and, and uh, you know, that's the one thing that you have a very difficult time of doing. I know our guys were excited about playing in the game. Uh, you know, you could really feel it when we pulled up into the stadium. And then for some reason, we just, the, the, the flat button hit us for, for whatever reason. All right, let's take a break and we'll be back with game highlights in just a moment. I'm Caden Cochran, quarterback from Cashin, Oklahoma. You're watching the David Dean Show. Go Blazers. Hello and welcome back to the David Dean Show, Coach Show. We go up to Carrollton and uh, it, it's a territory you're very familiar with. You coached there for a long time. But I'm still amazed when I drive, we drive up and we see that beautiful stadium there. And, and it's got to make the players really think, boy, this is, this is something big here. Well, there's no question. Our players are very jealous of all the, the things that they have, and, and it is a beautiful facility. Facility. They've done a great job. It was great for me. I, I saw a lot of players that I coached when I was there from 92 to 99, and they talked about, boy, I wish we had this when we were here. And it is. It's, it's probably the best in Division Two. There's no question about it. And the great thing about playing in Atlanta area, too, a lot of your players show up every time we get close to Atlanta, Georgia. It, they do. It, you know, it's great. You know, we always tell them they're always part of the family. It was great to see Rooster Russell and Tyler Arndt and Jeffrey Felton, you know, Travis Taylor. You can go on and on and on. There were several guys that showed up, and it's always great to see those former players. Let's take a look at the, some highlights of the game. Blazers come out with their white shirts and black pants today. We were all white the last away trip. We had to get rid of that. Yeah, we had to. Uh, our, our players wanted to wear the black pants in this game, and uh, knowing they were playing on grass probably is why they did it. But, uh, you know, I like that look. It's I, I like our white jerseys a good bit. This is just typical of what happened in the first half. We've been practicing this since the first day of practice, and we've never done that. I and mean, we do it in the game for, for whatever reason and have a penalty on top of it, so start back very deep in, in the hole and don't get a first down and get a nice punt. They come out and they put together a very good drive to open the ball game. I thought their quarterback uh, played a very good football game. He, uh, he made a lot of things happen in the first half, made a lot of great throws and a lot of great runs. And here's another one right here. He's got kind of deceptive speed. He's got some fast guys chasing him right there. But great drive by West Georgia to come down and take a seven to nothing lead. And then we come back and we hit a couple of passes here, a couple of nice runs, but we're short here on a third down. We're just a little bit late on the throw and we end up being a yard short. And we have to punt back to them. So we've gone two straight series going three and out. Good coverage here downfield on their little naked play and, and uh, forcing to throw the ball out of bounds. We did a pretty good job containing their running back, but one that hurt us was the quarterback. And uh, he did an excellent job of reading some things and getting out onto the perimeter. We get the ball back, and again, we're, we're doing a, a lot better job here of, of running the football. We're just not breaking tackles in the open field. Uh, they're making a lot of one-on-one -on -one tackles right there. You, there is another one, we're fixing to break that one. We get a great punt there by Dom DeMossi and Mel Magwood pins that thing down there on the two yard line. And we now got to force them to drive the length of the field. And that's the one thing that we didn't have in that in the entire first quarter. And then the second quarter uh, was field position. We were backed up almost every time we were starting inside the 20 yard line. And uh, you know, we just, we weren't executing well enough to start inside the 20 yard line to flip the field position. 
we finally got a little bit going right here and moving the ball to midfield. We get another nice punt and stop them down there in their territory. And you'll see right here was a big mistake by us. We're finally going to get good field position right here and we drop the punt. Reggie just takes his eye off the ball there. And seems like that ball laid there forever. And a good hustle there by West Georgia and they get the ball. So we were finally gonna get the ball on the 50 yard line and uh, we turn it right back over to them and give it to them in, in, in their territory. To their credit, they, they drive the ball down. We make a great goal line stand here. You see a great play here by Chris Pope. Great stop there on the quarterback and force them into a field goal. We get through there. Wish we had blocked that. We, we come free and we just don't use the proper technique of blocking. And, and uh, it was a good catch there by Zay Howard. That's his first catch of the year. Came in and played a Good job there at wide receiver. Willie Downs was out this game, and uh, he's uh, one of Willie's backups. Good play there by Jeremy Grable. Again, you can see we're, we're shutting the running back down. The quarterback was the one that was hurting us. Smart play here, he gets the ball, and throws it away, and then there's another good stop there on the running back. Great play there. I thought Chris Pope played an outstanding football game. Good run here by Cedric O'Neill right there before the half, and then we're just gonna try and throw the ball down the field here. There was three seconds left. And just see if something can happen, maybe get a tip ball or pass interference or something. And, you know, we'll take this as long as we can end up making the tackle and get the tackle there by Jesse Yancey. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, an ugly first half, and we go in 10 to nothing. Well, the weather gets better in the second half, the Blazers get better in the second half, but you, Ten to nothing. The first time Coach Blazers have been shut out since 2007. I've already told you that, and you were the coach in that over in Arkansas Tech. But uh, it, you're going to see a much different football team when they come out in that second half. Well, there's no question. You know, I, I thought our coaches did a great job of, of challenging their players, and, and and I think that that our players did a great job of accepting that challenge and doing what we had to do to win the football game. Right, we'll take a break. And be back with the second half in just a moment. The David Dean Show is brought to you by Georgia Farm Bureau, and also by. Colony Bank, the Houston Clinic, Sunset Farm Foods, Drury Inn and Suites, the Georgia Lottery, and Kentucky Fried Chicken. Welcome back to the David Dean Show. Coach, come out of the locker room 10 to nothing. As I said, the weather was a little shaky at the start. Not horrible, but it got a little sunny and everything. Things got better for the Blazers, too. And they got better in a part. We had an injury. Your quarterback goes down. Yeah, he did. He, he went into the game a little bit banged up. He didn't practice Tuesday and Wednesday, felt a little bit better Thursday and, and went out to practice. So we knew that, that he would may be playing on, on limited time. Uh, we were trying to get the best out of him that we could, and, and he did. He suffered, a, you know, the ankle injury that he suffered in the West Alabama game just reoccurred. And, uh, you know, you always want one of those guys behind him to step up, and that's exactly what Caleb, Caleb Nobles did, the outstanding football game by Caleb. So you put a freshman in there, and, and it was an unbelievably great performance for him. And he credits, of course, his receivers and his offensive line, and rightly so. Rightly so. Uh, our offensive line did a great job of protecting him. He threw the ball where it was supposed to go. We ran the ball much better, which opens up that pass game. But uh, just great leadership by him going in and taking control of that, that huddle and, and, and leading us to, to really five scores in about a quarter and a half. Yeah, well, let's take a look at the second half. It's pretty exciting. And after the game when we interviewed him, uh, so poised, I asked him about being nervous. He said, no, you know, I practice – you know, I practice to be here. This is what I want to do. Well, he does. He, he practices every week to, uh, to be the starter. And, and so he's always prepared. And anytime we have an opportunity to put him in the game, I feel very comfortable. It doesn't change our game plan, doesn't change our calls. Uh, he does an outstanding job. You see, we came back out with a little bit more fire. Uh, great job there by Charmaine Washington getting down there on the, on the kickoff, hustling down. We had a good kick. And, uh, do a good job here. Here's what we didn't do in the first half was contain the quarterback. And Kevin Davis makes a nice play there. And we get the ball back. They go three and out. And unfortunately, we, we get a first down, but they end up having to punt the football. And then they hit us with a big play here. Good play action. They get behind us and uh, score on the big touchdown there. And we go down 17 to nothing. And uh, we lost it right before this play here is when we lost Caden to the uh, ankle injury. You can see Caleb come in here and do an outstanding job of, of throwing the football around, distributing it. 
to a lot of people that are open. Makes great reads there on our on our run game, great checks at the line of scrimmage for us. And I thought this guy right here, Cedric O'Neill, played a hard second half. He ran the ball very well. Great kick here by Anthony Pastelli. He makes a, about a 45-yard field goal, but they roughed him. Gave us a first down and moved the ball. We took the points off the board, which is something that you don't normally do. And uh, we decided to take them off and go down and score because we needed a touchdown, and that was a, that was a big play for us. Unfortunately, we lost Isaiah Gresham right there. They got him for a targeting. And the next play, we get a big break. Ball squirts loose. Justin Williams picks up the ball and returns it down inside the 40-yard line. And then again, you can just see how much harder Cedric O'Neill is running. I thought Cedric played an outstanding game. Great catch right there by Tyree Waiters on the out cut. And then makes another nice throw right here to Sean Tavis and gets us inside. We had a holding penalty that backed us up. And uh, with a little screen again to Sean Tavis, does a great job of getting the ball down inside the five yard line. And then a good throw right here. To Rochmel Young, Rochmel's first touchdown catch in his career. He made a great move and got in the end zone. And we, we cut it to three. Got great kickoff again. They have a penalty that backs them up. We got to keep them right here. We challenged our defense to keep them there. And as you can see, we got great field position to start back up because we did keep them down there. Great throw there to, to Sean Tavius again. And uh, this is one right here that was, I thought was probably the best throw of the night by, by Caleb. And then they do the same thing here. We, we end up missing this field goal, but we get a roughing again. And uh, that was a big break that, that we needed to take advantage of. That's one thing I was proud of our guys of doing is we took advantage of some breaks that uh, that they gave us, and, and that's that's something that you got to do to be able to win football games. So we end up going up 21-17 now, and again, great run stop by, by our defensive line. Great penetration getting back there. Here's a big third down conversion for them. I was hoping that we could stop them right there. That continue to drive for them, and here's another third down conversion that they make. And a nice job here. On the throw right there, Jeremy Grable knocks him out of bounds and they throw it incomplete. Big play here, Kenny Moore, true freshman from Lowndes High School, makes his first career interception. Smart gets out of bounds without taking a hit. Really proud to see Kenny make that play there. Good throw again here on the rollout to Sean Tavius. See, Caleb and Sean Tavius did a great job of throwing the ball back and forth to those guys. And, making a lot of plays. Great play again here by, by Stretch. Gets us down in, in the territory. Good run there by Austin Scott. You see how we're making some people miss now. That's not what we did in the first half. And then I thought this was a great throw again off of a play action fake. That's not easy to do. You know, now we go up by 11 and well, we got to make a big hit. And this is a great play by them. We're right in position, right there to make the tackle. We don't do it. We miss a tackle there. And uh, he's got great speed. They have great blocking. To their credit, they're not giving up. And that was a big play for them to get back into the ball game, cut it back to, to a four-point game. And then I like the way that we responded. Great throw here to, to Chris Anderson. Getting us some positive yardage and a good run here. Again, look at the, uh, the leg drive there by Cedric. Great read here by Caleb. Picks up about 10 yards on the on the zone read. And then there we go again. Getting about 10, 12 yards of pop on the run. I thought our offensive line played a great fourth quarter. And then great run again there by, by Cedric O'Neill to, to get in. Really was hoping that we could take advantage of this right here. A bad snap and was hoping that he may panic a little bit and maybe throw that ball up to us, but he didn't do it. We're starting to put a little pressure on the quarterback. Get down in there. They get down here off of a pass interference call, and then they make a great throw there to, to cut it to 35 to 30. Great play here by Chris Anderson. That's not an easy thing to do. That's a, that's a scary, scary play in football. Here's the last play of the game. We uh, only had three seconds left, and we just tried to throw the ball as far as we can and, and run the three seconds off the clock. And 
just happened to make a big catch there at the end, which we weren't trying to do. But Sean Tavis, 11 catches, 187 yards, and he dominated. Coach, going back to Caleb, I know we over talk quarterbacks, everybody does, but the thing I noticed, he never hesitated. He just, you know, he never, I guess, I don't need to do this. He just reacted and made plays. Well, he does. He's a, he reads everything very quickly. And, and the one thing that I really like about Caleb when he's on the sideline is he watches the game. He knows what's going on. And, and I communicate with him a great deal. Uh, he's got a great dad. His dad's a, a high school football coach that I've known for a long time. And, and he gets it very, very honest. And, and he's just a very good, smart football player. Well, good win for Valdosta State. A great comeback up there in hostile territory because we've got a lot of friends up there. I do too at West Georgia. And Andy Mickishone told me, you know, this is the game we want. This is the game we want to win every year. It, there's no question. I've been there and, and coached at West Georgia. And, and they circle Valdosta State. They know when that game is. and and, and if they would rather beat Valdosta than anybody else on their schedule. Absolutely. Good one for Valdosta State. We'll be back with their jury in and sweet scoreboard in just a second. My name is Ashton Ballard. I play safety from Atlanta, Georgia. You're now watching the David Dean Show. Go Blazers. Welcome back to the Drury Inn and Sweet Scoreboard. And Coach, uh, we're going to go through a lot of scores here if we can. Some uh, pretty interesting ones. Uh, Delta State 38 to 36 over Tarleton State. Delta State's putting up a lot of points, so they must be playing very well on offense and beat a very good Tarleton team. And our opponent, we'll talk about them in the next segment, but North Alabama at 49 to 17 over Texas A&M Kingsville. Well, they had the hiccup against uh, Delta State, and from that point on, it looks like they're playing excellent football. We may be catching them in a bad time. I think they're playing their best football right now. And this one surprised you a little bit. Midwestern State 45, West Alabama 21. Well, it looks like West Alabama had the same thing as us, had a little bit of a hangover off of a, very, a very emotional game the week before and had to travel. And it uh, looks like they got behind early and couldn't catch back up. Well, Midwestern's a top 15 team, I believe, in the, in the national poll. Yeah, I think they're 16 or 17 in the country right now. So a good win for them. Uh, some other scores, these are region scores, which now are really you got to start paying attention to because that's, that's the thing. Uh, give you the, the big one was uh, Lenore Ryan beating Newberry, who was undefeated 35 to 14. Yeah, uh, Lenore Ryan's a very good football team. They're always one of those that's right outside the top 25 over the last three years. And that was a big win for Lenore Ryan. That kind of puts them and Carson Newman at, at the head of that SIAC. And Carson Newman did win 45 to 17 over Tusculum. So, yeah, yeah. Carson Newman is going to be Carson Newman. And I said SIAC, I meant SAC the South Atlantic Conference, but uh, those two right now are the top in, in, in that conference right now with Newberry one behind. All right, Coach, we'll be back with the Georgia Farm Bureau. Look ahead in just a second. The David Dean Show is brought to you by Georgia Farm Bureau and also by Mediacom, First State Bank and Trust, Blanton and Griffin, Anheuser-Busch, Holiday Inn, Prince Automotive, and U.S. Education TV. Welcome back to the Georgia Farm Bureau. Look ahead and coach, we've uh, getting to the point of the season past the halfway point for most schools and uh, we have North Alabama coming in. I'm gonna get to them in just a moment, but the region, this, it really becomes important now. We've got the SI, SIAC, the SAC, and the GSC in our region and a couple of independents. The process there, explain that a little bit for the, the people watching that maybe are not familiar with how it goes. Well, they put a great emphasis on in-region games, which would be all of those teams that you just mentioned. And then outside of that would be Division II wins that you have. Uh, your teams that you play in the NAIA, Division Three, or the FCS, they really don't count very much. Whether you win or lose those, they kind of wash those. So strength of schedule is big. How much your opponents are winning, that's why we pull for people like Fort Valley to win and Angelo State to win, because that helps your strength of schedule. Uh, but the big thing is winning all those region games, it, it, and it really has nothing to do with winning your conference or anything like that. It's all how you're based into the region and how you've done with this, those region games. Well, when you schedule a game down like playing uh, in an NAIA school or something, is that something that's just sort of forced on you because you can't find anybody else to play? Well, it is, and, and that's what we did with Edward Waters last year. Uh, you know, they had an open date, and we had an open date, and nobody else could fill that. The problem that you got is, is right now we've got seven teams in the Gulf South Conference that we can play, but if you have an open date later in the season, most everybody's in their conference and you can't find somebody, so you're going to have to move down to an to a NAIA school or something like that. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. And North Alabama, we don't need to say much, they're coming to town, they're playing well. 
that game's at 2 o'clock Saturday at the stadium, but uh, tell us about them. Well, you know, they're always going to be very athletic. Uh, they do a great job running the football. Uh, they, they ran the ball very well against West Georgia, which is something that we didn't do until the second half. Uh, it looks like that they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. They lost to uh, Jacksonville State, who's an FCS school, in double overtime, missed a field goal that would have sent it to a third overtime. And then they lost to Delta State in a close ball game. Uh, on the road, I think, at Delta State. So they're playing very well. They've, they've been playing very well since they lost the Delta State game. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be one of those that the winner of this one kind of puts themselves in a great position if they can finish out to, to put themselves in a position to go to the playoffs. All right, Coach. Well, again, congratulations on a good win up at uh, West Georgia, 35-30, to and the Blazers get back on the winning streak. <laughs> so uh, it was a good win for Valdez State. Reminder again, North Alabama comes to Valdez to Saturday for a two o'clock kickoff at uh, Baysmore Hydro Stadium and hope you'll find time to come out and watch some good football with Valdosta State. So for David Dean, the head coach, I'm Dick Rocky. Have a wonderful week.